Okay, and welcome back to Aging Well. I'm your host, Nathan Lamb. Today our topic is our adult family care program at Somerville Cambridge Elder Services. With me today is Jeannie Lydon. Good to see you. Great to have you in the studio. Thank you. So we're going to talk a little bit about National Caregiver Month in this segment. Um, National Caregiver Month is in November. The theme for this year is Take Care to Give Care. And this really touches on a theme that's close to your heart, uh, supporting the caregivers and, and helping them to succeed. So can you tell me a little bit about what AFC is doing for that? Uh, yes. Um, well, we, we try to validate what our caregivers do any chance we can because it's a 24-7, around-the-clock job. And sometimes you don't always get a lot of, uh, well, thank you so much for what you do. So we really try to validate what, what, the, you know, what they do on a uh, regular basis. Um, but we also, our agency is so great, some of our Cambridge Elder Services, that we take a portion of what we make from this program and we give it back into the program. So it's very important that we do things for our caregivers, and especially on uh, you know, November when it's National Caregiver Month. Last year, we um, had first aid kits made up for all our families, you know, and now when a new client comes on to our program, they start them out with a first aid kit. So it's a win-win. We need this to be in compliance with Mass Health, but it was a great thing. Our caregivers loved, loved it. This year, we are giving tote bags with AFC, and we're going to have a lot of different things in the tote bags. Um, you know, 10 of the best ways to deal with caregiver stress. Mm -hmm. Some fun tips. We're going to have some fun stress balls. Um, some educational resources where there are support groups and different things like that. So we're going to go um, out with our tote bags for each one of them. And we also, um, in this program, we're required to, to do um, clinical teaching and training throughout the year. Mm -hmm. So we pretty much every month go out and we have a, an agenda or a training topic. and. Um, we try to stick to it, but sometimes you may go out to the home and the caregiver just might be having a stressful day or the participant, and you may switch gears to just provide emotional support. We do a lot of that. So our caregivers really, they, they when we gave them the first aid kits last night, last year, and we also sent out a letter just thanking them for all, you know, that they do and that we really appreciate them and how it much, much it means to all of us as the AFC team to be part of their lives. That's really great. Yeah. And you, you touched on it there, the ongoing. It's nice to have a big recognition once per year, but the, the ongoing supports, the way that you're able to help combat caregiver stress um, through both the respite and the tr um, training. Can we talk a little bit about the respite? Yes, yeah, so what um, our, our caregivers can have two weeks off in the course of the year to take time off for themselves. Um, we encourage this wholeheartedly, as much as you love somebody, you know, um, to have a little separation, but you deserve to have a vacation. What we find a lot of times, um, that caregivers tend to not take good enough care of themselves. And really, if you want to be in this for the long haul, you have to. Mm. So that's the kind of thing, um, really trying to um, show and teach a caregiver healthy choices, healthy lifestyles, taking that two weeks off, to go do something to have that time for yourself. And so they will still get paid their, their you know, um, stipend for that, that period for two weeks' time. Mm -hmm. And we also pay another caregiver that at a little higher rate to come in and provide care for their participant during that time. That's great. Yeah. So I, I think the way it was phrased in the um, promotional materials for the um, caregiver month was they said that caregivers often put themselves last because they're busy caring for others. They so often do. And even sometimes in this program, we've had um, some families like that their first reaction is, no, I cannot accept payment for taking care of my mother. Are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. And then you see the sacrifices that, that people make taking care of somebody. You know, I've seen families give up a job, you know, um, give up jobs and that financial security of their own job to just be providing care. So to get through that barrier, this is a Mass Health funded program that is there for somebody who meets that Mass Health criteria, you're eligible for it. And sometimes, you know, when you break through this resistance, they're really appreciative of the support that they have. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and one other thing I'll just bring up, because we were talking about it recently. Uh, there was a study that some of the folks in your department brought to my attention where they 
it wasn't quite entirely apples to apples, but it was a study out in California with intensive caregiver training. And they basically found that um, there were correlations between better health and increased training for caregivers, which I, I thought was kind of great because it's an ongoing uh, effort that AFC has to train caregivers. And then there's this study that this was slightly different, slightly more intensive. This was like 40 hours, but it was a lot of the same topics they were training the people on. Right. And they were having better outcomes with maintaining health. I think avoiding trips to the emergency room was one of them. So it, it does seem like that training can also help make a difference and help them provide that better care. The training really does, does help. Um, with some of our, uh, say a client with um, a mental health diagnosis, we have many clients with dual diagnosis. They may have something like bipolar or Asperger's. And um, we could really correlate a decrease in psych hospitalization since they were in our program. We've had, um, you know, I can think of a young man that was in our program for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And um, he had a caregiver who had raised um, three boys. His wife had, had passed away and he wanted to do something um, meaningful in his life. Never even knew what Asperger's was, but we did a lot of training and teaching. He joined an Asperger's support group with this client. Mm -hmm. And um, that client, I think through the 10 years, it was um, one, hos one psych hospitalization. Mm -hmm. So it really, really works when you're, you're able to have a good caregiver providing support in a loving environment and also the support of a, a nurse and social worker. And mm -hmm. we've seen fall risks. A lot of times there's a decrease in falls because of being in a, you know, um, a, a structured program where you have oversight. Absolutely. That, that jogged my memory. I remember in discussing the training, Part of it was fairly standardized. And then my understanding was that some of it is a little more uh, tailored to the household's needs, as you were indicating with, uh, in that one example that you gave. So it's kind of a mix. It absolutely is. So if someone comes along and they, they have a new diagnosis, they're diabetic, we're going to have to switch gears. If we were going out with one topic and this is a new diagnosis, we're going to get out there and do a lot of teaching around diabetes, what it is, both for the participant and the caregiver, and oversee that kind of thing. So a lot of teaching, education, and support. Absolutely. All right. Well, I guess we'll uh, take a quick break. We'll be back for a third and final segment. 